Today we are here in the Indo Suisse at Ocean Springs Hospital with Dr. Ijla Baber. He's our Director of Critical Care and also a pulmonologist here at the system. And prior to COVID, he helped found our very first hypertension clinic here on the Gulf Coast. So now, even though he was on the front lines taking care of COVID patients as well as our lung patients throughout the pandemic, he also was investing his time into learning new technologies to make people breathe a little easier. So Dr. Bobber, tell us about the new Zephyr valve treatment that we have for patients with severe emphysema. Sure. Sarah, well, um, <clears throat> let me first begin with what emphysema actually is. And emphysema is a form of COPD in which there's a lot of lung destruction. And what that does is it tends to trap air in the lungs. The lungs work like bellows and they work best when they're allowed to open and close. When people get this emphysema, what happens is that the lungs can no longer open and close, they just remain permanently inflated, like a big balloon which is fully inflated. But what these valves do is, we put them in the most diseased part of the lung, the one which is the most hyperinflated, and by putting it in that diseased part, we cause that part of the lung to deflate. So remember, this is a part of the lung which isn't really helping in air exchange anyway, so by deflating it, we take away this part of the lung and allow the adjacent lobe which is not as inflated to open and close, and so we restore the ability to breathe to these patients. So how do people know if they have emphysema or COPD or any kind of obstruction in the lungs? So this is the diagnosis that is made best by the physician. Um, <clears throat> um, if you've been smoking for greater than 20 years, um, uh, one pack a day, uh, which is 20 pack years, history of smoking, then it is possible that you have COPD. Symptoms are patients are short, short of breath with exertion, they're going to have coughing, sputum production, and wheezing. Now, so that's how you begin and then you document the diagnosis by getting a pulmonary function test on these patients. For most part of your career, you've been trying to find new ways to help uh, treat lung illnesses that were kind of not able to treat for a long time or people didn't have the right um, you know, treatments or you know, medicines that could alleviate them from their symptoms. So talk a little bit about how you've seen you know, the pulmonary world evolve with trying to find you know, answers for these patients who cannot breathe. Oh, uh, within my uh, span of practice, um, and I can't take any credit for all of these things, these, these have been done by some fantastic researchers around the world, um, but within the span of my practice, I've seen things that were completely untreatable become treatable, and things that were not diagnosable become diagnosable. We could never think that we would be able to go and get a sub-centimeter little spot in the lung and di diagnose it, and we, can, we do that almost every week now. Um, similarly, emphysema used to be something that could only be treated with bronchodilators, but now we can go and perform this, these procedures and really improve patients' quality of life. So right. I've seen a lot of things That's Wonderful. Uh, so who uh, qualifies for the Zephyr valve? So it's a pretty stringent qualification. Um, in fact, we spend far more time trying to identify the right person. The procedure itself is not that difficult at all. Um, it, it's actually um, uh, just a very thorough process that we put people in, through. So you have to meet certain criteria based on your breathing test. That's the first step. Next, you have to have a CT scan which shows that there is one lobe that is more diseased than the others, and that is the one we're going to target. We have to make sure that your body mass index isn't too high. We have to make sure that you don't retain carbon dioxide um, on your blood gas, and we have to make sure there aren't any spots in your lungs that could potentially be malignant. So after we've gone through all of this, then we proceed with the actual valves. Okay, that makes sense. So who uh, usually has emphysema? Like what um, causes it? Emphysema is a destruction of, so COPD can either present as mainly airway disease, which is patients who have more bronchitis, and these people are gonna be coughing and wheezing most of the time, as opposed to people who get emphysema, where there's destruction of the air spaces of the lung. So instead of being little small alveoli, they become big balloons in the lungs. Now most people usually have a combination of both things. There are, there are a few people who have just pure emphysema and pure bronchitis, 
most people will have a bit of both mm -hmm. in their lungs. So what happens to that air when it gets trapped in the lungs since you can't breathe it out? So what happens is it's, it's a feeling of not being able to breathe. Patients with emphysema basically have their lungs hyperinflated all the time. Uh, because they can't move air in and out, they get short of breath with minimal exertion. You know, walking across a room will then get them out of breath. They often have to purse their lips to try and breathe out. So you'll see them go like that mm -hmm. because they can't breathe out easily. So all of these things are, are consistent with emphysema. Okay, so when people um, you know, have gotten to this point and they you know, want to see if this is an option, how do they contact you? So our um, office number is 228-872-1951. Um, and you, know, uh, you just have to mention the, 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 that you are interested in the valve and you know, we will take it from there. So what made you want to bring this technology or this procedure to the coast? Um, this procedure is recommended by almost all our, um, our societies now. It is something that has been shown in rigorous clinical trials, multiple trials that it works. And the fact that we are now the only place in the state of Mississippi besides Jackson that does it. Next to us, Mobile doesn't have it and New Orleans doesn't have it. So really it's uh, Jackson, us and Birmingham that are doing it in this area. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time and you know, putting a lot of, of your, your mind to this matter and to bring you know, people uh, some better uh, lung care here on the coast, well, thank as you always. So much, Sarah. Thank you for having me.